I was at an Ulf Ekman conference in the October of 1995, mm. and um, it was a, a three-day conference about, about the authority and the power of the local church. And over the th uh, three days I was there, it just began to happen on the inside of me again. All the dreams, all the visions, all the goals that I'd had before all came alive again. Everything that I'd put you know, to death, really, everything I'd put down, you know, the Bible says that a grain of wheat needs to fall into the ground and die, and that, all of that had just completely died in us. Um, you we know, purposed after, to do it, hadn't yeah, we? Yeah, purposed. Because on... we got that verse and thought, right, let's just put everything down. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I came home and I thought, how on earth am I going to tell Sharon? <laughs> um, having put all that down, laid all that down, we, we, you know, we didn't have any intention on that ever happening again. And I can remember I came home and Sharon was at the kitchen sink, uh, which I was really <laughs> pleased to see. And... Um, and I said something along the lines, you probably remember far better than I do, but something like, I believe we should start to have some services again or something like that. Yeah. Had, uh, prayer times in the church with some other leaders and pastors that I knew. In our home. In our home. Did I, yeah. What did I say? In the church. Yes. In the home. We didn't have a church. We didn't have anything. We had a, a house. And um, so we just began to, in, in, uh, to really you know, get our faith behind it and get the mm. Spirit of God all, all over the idea and the vision of it, really. And so we did that, and then we started. I, was, I wasn't in many of those, though. She was upstairs with the baby. <laughs> I was upstairs with, with Christopher. Christopher. Trying to get him to sleep, really hoping to get him to sleep so I could go back down to the meeting, and he wouldn't, so I would He just... still doesn't, just, as a, <laughs> just so you know. He still doesn't sleep. So I could hear all this excitement going on and praying and everything, and I'd be upstairs, <laughs> but I would just be praying so much what God would put onto my heart. I'd be just looking out the window and um, and just praying over over Bromley where we were at the time, and saying, "God, you know, you just do what you what you need to do," and just really praying in the spirit for Bromley and London and and this nation. kicked off on the mm -hmm. on the 9th of February and we started in a school in the area in the drama studio which was a mess we called it the black hole yeah. and um, <laughs> I think we started with with probably about a dozen for, mm -hmm. on the first Sunday and we had a little old amplifier my acoustic guitar um, I did the praise and worship I did the offering I did the church announcements we didn't have any but of course we had something and then I <laughs> preached the word and I can remember the first thing I ever I preached and it was from Psalm 86 I think it is where it says happy are those who know the joyful sound because they will live in your countenance they will live in victory and it goes through the Psalms and that's always been something on my heart there is a, a sound in in the church of joy there's a sound of of, of overcoming faith there is a sound there's that there's something that you have to tap into. There's a sound in the spirit. It's not a sound of complaining and moaning and unbelief and uh, you know all of these things. It's a sound of victory. It's a sound of, of, of incredible strength. And that was the first thing I spoke in the church. And it's something I would still absolutely stand on today, that there is a sound in the church. It was quite uh, strange to talk about all this huge dream and all about this huge vision and great expectation with, you know, it's as if I'm just speaking to a handful of people, but actually in reality, I'm speaking it out into the vision and into the spirit of the church. And it's to see the power of God in London again. It's to see the city of God absolutely impact every part of our city, to see the kingdom of God, to see his power, to see his spirit, to see people healed, saved, and, you know, set free. The whole, the whole heart of this church is about people. It's we are here to make disciples. You know, the dream isn't, to have a building, the dream isn't to, to have this outreach or that outreach. The dream of this church is to make disciples. That's what we're all about. That's what that's what stirs us. That's yeah. what got us going yeah. in the early days. It was to see lives changed. Yeah. I know what God's done in me. Sharon knows what God's done in her. And um, <clears throat> absolutely, this is all about people. And church needs to fulfill what God wants it to fulfill, which is really twofold, to train the church and to win the lost. That's what church is all about. God just put this picture in my mind of a sea of hands lifted up and just all praising God, 
just absolutely and the joy and just the excitement and the passion from the people um, with all their hands it was like a sea of people and that's my vision whenever I think of of Citygate that's the vision that God gave me of just affecting so many people's lives um, at, that it was like a sea of, of people just coming to know God um, and, and loving him so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely believe that that you know through the church and through each part doing its work but obviously coming from the power of God's vision and, it, and from his grace upon our lives and his empowering um, our church can see thousands of people come to Christ mm. we can see tens of thousands of people come to Christ um, I absolutely believe that I don't believe we've seen anything yet mm. you know compared to that which God has and I'm so glad to have been married to Sharon for 27 years <laughs> with you know three great boys and a great team in the church yeah. Uh, to do life together, to do a journey together, we haven't had a road crash on the way, uh, you know things. And we're, certainly not and we're not having one in the future. Not going to drop the ball. <laughs> no, and um, I'm so thrilled for all the people mm. that partner with us mm. to see this vision come to pass.